Hi there. So what I wanted to do is, in addition to the written review that I'm going to be uploading for the Surface Pro 3, uh, this, that's the i7 model, um, I thought I'd do a short video just demonstrating what some of the applications look like and also run like uh, on the Surface Pro 3. Um, what I'm also doing is I'm using the Surface Pro's microphone, built-in microphone to record the audio for this. So, again, this is just a test. So, if the audio is not very good, then I apologise. But if it is good, then I'll probably use it again for future recordings. Um, again, if it's not very good, then I'll probably plug in my own microphone as I normally do. So, what you can see before you is... Uh, ZBrush 4 R7 and this is the 64-bit version. I was originally going to show you a comparison between the 32-bit and the 64-bit but to be honest if you've got the 64-bit I suggest you use it because it runs so much nicer uh, than the 32-bit version. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a few of the sample scenes just show you how uh, how you can navigate around them um, and just what it's give you a basic idea of what it's like to work in the in uh, with ZBrush on the Surface Pro 3. One other thing that I uh, also want to show you is, uh, as you can see over here, we have this uh, radial menu uh, toolkit. And basically, if you're using the Surface Pro 3 without the keyboard attached, so in sort of tablet mode, as you would be if you wanted to use ZBrush or Mischief or Photoshop, then you're going to lose access to those keys. And with applications like this, you need to be able to hold Alt, Control, or Shift um, just to speed up your own workflow so you're not always looking through menus. Um, so this is just a really nice tool, and all it is is a floating um, dock which you can fully customize yourself. This is just something I'd quickly set up, and I have to say I'm still working on it, so there will be more buttons added to this as I work more in ZBrush. Um, and in addition to the toolbar, um, you also get a handy little radial menu like this. And I've just set it up so that it triggers on a button press, but you can set it up lots of different ways. Again, this is just the default one, but I like having this here just for the undo and redo buttons. I'll probably end up changing these other ones, but again, this is the default one. And the more I use ZBrush or whatever application, the more I'll customize these. Um, and if you like, I can upload these uh, to my website and then you can download them and use them yourself if you're using radial menu. Um, so here we are, we're in ZBrush and as you can see it fits the screen quite nicely. Um, some of the menu items are quite small up here but I find them quite alright to work with. Um, some of you might prefer them a little bit bigger uh, but I don't mind them exactly how they are. Um, you'll also notice the UI is different and this is because I've started building up my own sort of custom UI, throwing buttons around, um, just building up things so they're easier and quicker to get quicker to, get to um, rather than again searching through menus. The only thing as you can see is with the light box part of it's missing underneath this tab but luckily we can just close that tab and then get access to it in here and we can also hide it if we need to. So let's load in a scene. Um, we'll load in this heavy mech just to see how it runs. So here we can see we can pan round it and it runs quite nicely. Now I do I have to say that this does run a little bit faster than what you're viewing it now than well than how you're viewing it now, and that's because the recording software is probably having a little bit of a hit on the processing power. Um, but yeah, works quite nicely, we can move around it, we can pan, um, we can use our radial menu toolbar here just to zoom in and out, turn on polyframe, you know, and then we can go in and we can start editing, we can use the Z modeler brush, let's just go to uh, single poly, poly extrude, and we can go in and just start working on this and as you can see these polys are coming out quite quickly you know there's not any major problems there if 
you're building a, a low poly mesh, you quite happily work in this. You know, obviously there's lots more things you can do with that. But this is just a quick demonstration. I'm not gonna start creating a full sort of tutorial. But that works quite nicely, I'm quite happy with that. Like I say, it does run a little bit faster than what you're seeing at the moment, but all in all, I could be quite happy to work in this. So let's uh, load something else. Let's just move that out of the way. Move it back. So let's try this dog here and just have a look at what it's like to be to groom it. Turn off polyframe. And there, see we can spin around and that's running really smoothly. Just make sure we have the right brush. Just try the groom hair long. We'll just zoom in here. And there, we could just start grooming it. And again, that's running quite nicely. When I compared this before with the 32-bit version, this was a little bit juddery and not as responsive. So the 64-bit version is just so much nicer, especially on the Surface Pro 3. So there you can see, just using the Alt button here, I can move around the screen quite easily. So let's try something else. New document. Um, let's just load in this guy. Bring that back. So yeah, there we go. He's again spinning around really nicely. And we can just go in and sculpt on him. You know, just like so. Let's turn off that colour. But as you can see, it's quite usable. You could quite happily, once you get used to using this uh, radial menu toolbar, you could quite happily come in and have some fun in uh, in ZBrush. There is a slight issue where sometimes if you're holding down a button, it will sort of drop. But that may just come down to practice, really, and how your finger presses that button there. Maybe if you're touching the screen somewhere else. You know, I'm not doing anything dramatic. Let's just add another division. As you can see, just even adding that other extra division hasn't had much of an impact. Let's go. This time I'm going to, let's import something of my own. So this is just a test model that's got one and a half million polys in it, as you can probably tell from the title. Oops. Yes. Let's fully initialize it so there's no lingering assets. Um, that's it, let's import that again. So you might recognize her from some of my previous work. You'll also notice some of the secrets where even I knew that she was only going to be rendered from this side so I didn't really do much to the back. 
But just as a test model, this is one and a half million polys. Just move around like that so she looks a bit better. As you can see, we're zooming in. This is running quite nicely. Let's just go in, add a division. Still running quite nicely. Oops. Let's add another division. From there, you can still manipulate it. Go in, do some sculpting. I'm not sure what's happening, but the pen pressure doesn't seem to be coming through. It was working before, I'm not sure, maybe it's the scene or... or something, but as you can see, I've this is a one and a half million poly scene, I've imported it. Um, divided it twice. I wonder if I can do it now. I've reached the limit per model, but then obviously, if I was working on this scene, I wouldn't have her entirely, entirely one model. All these different elements would be different models. Not sure why the pressure isn't coming through. Well, it might be because I'm recording as well at the same time and maybe it's, you know, there's some sort of clash going on. But I can assure you that the pressure does come through nicely. Um, what I'll do is I'll restart the Ted brush. Just see if that sorts it. You can also see up here that the, uh, the radial menu changes depending on what application you're using. So let's just load in one of these. That's better. You can just make out the pressure coming through. So there I'm pressing on lightly, and then I press harder. You know, and if that curve doesn't work for you, you can use a surface hub to uh, adjust to suit your actual uh, drawing and sculpting needs. So that's better, it just needed, looks like the ZBrush just needed restarting. But there, we've just had a very quick demonstration of ZBrush 4R7 running on the Surface Pro 3. Um, in my opinion, it runs very nicely and I could see myself working in it quite a bit. Once I start to get more intense models, then I'd probably switch back to the desktop machine. And I do think that if you're coming from a Cintiq or something, or another Wacom uh, device, using these keys here, it may take a little bit of getting used to. But all in all, I'm quite happy with the results and I'm quite happy to uh, keep playing around in ZBrush. Um, what I also wanted to show you Let's close this down. Let's load in Mischief. Now this one, th for this, I don't really need the toolbar. So I'm just gonna, let's just hide that. Let's just move it over here for now. So this is Mischief and it's just basically a, a very nice drawing and sketching application. Um, you have your brushes down here and you can basically just go in and sketch away and as you can see up here let me just change the paper something a bit more 
let's just make it white just just so that the brush strokes show up a bit better there we go and we'll just use a black brush but as you can see I'm just using this so there I'm drawing very lightly and then I'm pressing pressing on a little harder the opacity of the brush is only set to 26 but this just shows off the the pen quite nicely so we can just sketch a bit there you know you can quite easily just come in and doodle away touch controls you can also zoom in and out although sometimes they don't quite catch like now using both fingers there we go so sometimes they just don't trigger you can also rotate the canvas using the touch control so there I'm just panning around just using my fingers and the beauty of the program like mischief is it's infinite canvas so as you zoom out, let's just rotate that back around. You know, we could use a harder brush, you know, for more for inking. And we can draw up here. You know, and you can see it's it's working quite well and you're getting that sort of finer edge. But then we can zoom back in if it'll let me. That's it. And then we can continue to draw. And it just goes on and on and on forever. So you can continue to just zoom in to the lines you've just drawn. And draw again. And zoom in again. Or alternatively, zoom out. You'll notice you've got lovely, clean, crisp lines because it's all, all kind of vector based. So this means that you can then export any illustrations you've done and they'll you can export them at any resolution so they're perfect for printing. But again, this isn't really a review of the application. This is just me demonstrating uh, drawing in it on the Surface Pro 3. And the pen is really responsive. I'm doing some quite quick movements with my hand here and it's keeping up really well and again you've got the the variable pressure I quite like the sort of pencily brush just for doodling in you know that sort of thing then we can zoom back out and there you can see there right in the distance is what I've just been drawing but because it's an infinite canvas we can just keep zooming in and out and keep just pan forever you know, like I said, the, the touch controls are a little bit dodgy. They did work every now and again. But yeah, it, I would have to say it works very nicely on the Surface Pro 3. So there's, there's just a very quick demonstration of ZBrush and um, Mischief on the Surface Pro 3. Um, if you haven't already, please check out my review of the Surface Pro 3. Um, and if there's anything else you want to see demonstrated or, or, or anything like that, then just please get in touch. And I hope this video has been uh, informative.